Okay, I've got all my, um, my three stacks cut, and you'll notice that I did not cut, um, just like it says on the pattern, do not cut fabric stack on this line. Okay, so I have not cut on the circle just yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the freezer paper. And for the star pieces, it is now garbage. And here's that homespun I told you about. See, it does not, it really sticks good to the homespun. It sticks well, and so then it's just a little bit harder to get the freezer paper off those brushed homespuns. It's not that bad, but I just generally try to avoid it if I can. Okay, almost done. One more here. Okay, so there are the star ones. And these are all going to go in the garbage. Okay, now when we take off the backgrounds, you do want to save those because those are your templates for your circles. And um, I know we only have one template here and we've got nine nine fabrics per stack, but you can reuse this freezer paper. And generally, I will. I will get all my circle templates, or circles, for each one of these fat borders out of one set of templates. I'm gonna keep each group of templates together because they, you may have cut just a little bit different. And so you know that this set of templates is like, uh, will go back identically, just like a cardboard puzzle. We've got our three separate stacks, red, black, and gold, and uh, we can't see anything, obviously. We can't tell where our star is. So this is where we're going to trade piles. And those star pieces are going to, the red star, and we're going to just start, we'll start with C1 up here, it's going to go to the black pile. The black one's going to come to the gold pile, and the gold's going to come back here to the red. And we're going to come down here to this middle one, A3. A3, A3, and then back to the red. Okay, last one would be B2. All right. Very good. So now, as you look here, you can see a star, and so you can be fairly confident that you've traded your piles correctly because I see a star in every pile. Okay, then the next thing that we want to do is we want to mix up our backgrounds. I want a different red fabric in each position. And it doesn't matter where you start. Whichever red pile you pick up first, you're going to pick it up and you're going to put the top fabric on the bottom. Our goal here is to have a different fabric in every position. So this was number one. No, over here, we're going to take the top two, one, two, put two fabrics on the bottom. And again, it doesn't matter. You can go whichever order. If you want to come around this way, we can scoot over here to three. And we can go one, two, three, and put them on the bottom. And this one's going to be four. One, two, three, four. Put it on the bottom. Okay, now this one, this was our top fabric, and it's uh, it's already different, so it doesn't need to be shuffled unless there's some reason that you don't like it where it is, then you can go ahead and shuffle it, and that would be five on the bottom. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with the star fabrics. 
and put one on the bottom, two on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick. If this was one and this is two, especially if you count, have to count clear like up to 15 or more, you go to the last fabric in your pile so you don't have to count. So you've the last fabric was this one, and you pick it up and put it on the bottom. Then you don't have to count. And then we're gonna, this was the last one, so we're gonna go down in your pile, find that last fabric, pick it up, and put it on the bottom. Okay, so we've got a different red in each background position and a different gold in each of the star positions. We're going to do the same thing over here for each of um, our other piles, our gold pile and our black pile. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to set those aside for now. You know, and we're going to just concentrate on working on this red pile. Okay, um, we're ready um, to start sewing or getting re uh, ready to add our circles before we sew. And this is a little trick uh, that Pam likes to do, uh, for especially if someone hasn't done one of our crazies, is take one block and lay it out on your master or a tracing of the master. So she, she, from the top of her pile, she just comes over here. I'm going to lay one block out. Just the top layer. And this way, um, as you sew, you don't get uh, confused about where you've been because you can tell that there's no more fabric underneath there to confuse you. All right, so we've got one block laid out here on a copy of the mask. I'm going to skip this over. Okay, and then now we're ready to do our circles. And so here are our templates um, from when we cut our stacks out. And you're just going to take your scissors and cut each one of those circle templates out. Right on the line. Okay, so this is C3, so that's going to go right there. Right. So you can see where we're at. Here's A1. These are ones that I've already cut out. B1, B3, and C2. Okay, so that's where the circles are going to go. And um, I usually, uh, for expediency, will use wool. And so you're going to take your piece of wool, and to prepare it, uh, you, whichever side you like best is going to be your right side. And that just depends on your the color gradations. So on the wrong side, I'm going to take some pieces of web, follow the manufacturer directions with your iron on your the wool setting. I'll give myself a make sure I have enough of it. over and I'm going to just take my templates iron them on. You sort of have to play around to see what's the best use of your space. It's not going to be perfect but you're going to try to use the least amount of wool. All right, and then I'm going to just iron these templates on. And then again, with your scissors. Cut 
each one of these out. Okay, so I'm going to finish cutting these out and then I'll be right back with you.